Thank you. Let's just uh, pray again. God, we just thank you for the privilege of worship. And we ask now that you would help us as we share and as we consider some of the things that are happening, some of the things that we are facing as we go forward together. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for your prayers uh, for us as we were there in Singapore. It was a very uh, challenging time, very stretching uh, time. I was making some comparisons of the uh, meetings we had in the 70s and the 80s comparison to the meetings in the 90s. Um, certainly the 90s, again, maybe 96 is, the, is, is an exception. I don't have that good of memory remembering all the details, but certainly... These meetings go on in a far more peaceable way than I can remember in past years. Uh, Probably a number of reasons for that. I won't get into it. It doesn't mean that everything is smooth and that we all just agree easily on everything because we don't. But it does seem that there's a momentum that's built up over the years and uh, maybe there's also maturity, maybe other things, maybe even some negative things. But uh, we certainly got through a massive uh, agenda. These are the two uh, main papers or uh, agendas, all kinds of other uh, papers that I may just uh, refer to a little later on. But before I do that, uh, welcome back to some other people. Again, I don't have the credentials to welcome you since you're probably already here last week and I've been away, but it's great to have Viv back and... uh, We'll certainly be hearing from him sooner or later, hopefully sooner. Look forward to the meeting uh, next Tuesday night. I am around just for a while, two weeks, I guess, all told. And then between now and June, I will be here uh, a lot more than I have in the past couple of months. Good to see uh, Joseph back. And we're excited about what God is doing in Algeria, I guess, If we really were able to measure things the way they see things in heaven, we would probably have to say that the breakthroughs in prayer for Algeria have been as significant as anything we've we've seen. I'm almost hesitant to say that because we know things can change again. But right now, it does look encouraging. And if Joseph is around on on Tuesday, we'll have him, when we have a bigger crowd, share uh, on that. It's just quite quite amazing it's good to have Jack Rendell back from Latin America big things are happening in connection with the Rendells and so I think it would be good if Jack you came and shared that we discussed it on the phone and mentioned that would be good so we can all be praying it will come a bit as a surprise to some people but not to the Lord right I hope not (laughs) well good morning to everyone um, I think some of the rumors of us um, going to the States for a while have been going around and I thought maybe it was good to say something very clearly or as clearly as possible about it to everyone uh, so that it was more official. Um, the idea is to go to the States for about a year and a half. Last November, Susan started uh, struggling a lot with uh, with some uh, physical problems that uh, really started last spring, I suppose. She uh, was getting problems with allergies, but it got really intensive in November, December. She actually has to carry a serum around with her now because if she eats certain things, and she's not always sure what the context of everything she's eating is, um, she can get these terrible attacks. uh, Her skin breaks out and her throat... um, tightens up so she can't even breathe and just recently she had another one and they had to uh, give her something that she just places on her on her thigh and pushes in and she has a serum and it unrestricts her throat and she can carry on living but it's uh, death threatening so she um, is in a serious situation in that sense and along with this I think her homesickness began to grow uh, that probably brought out brought it out more than anything else but she wanted to go see what it was like living in the States, and uh, we felt it would be a good thing for her to see something of that, and what it was like, and the differences uh, from what it was like living here, at least some of them. And um, I think she's just facing too much homesickness to be able to carry on and called us. Um, she called us several times, and we kind of held her off and encouraged her and reminded her of all the positive th- side of things. 
But finally, on the uh, first of uh, the year, she called and said she just couldn't handle it anymore and was either coming home or we had to go over there. So we started thinking and praying about it and wondering what was the best thing to do. Of all the things and challenges that she faces, and they're not all negative. Some of them are, are just good, straightforward things that she has to face and, and work through. But of all the situations that she faced in the States, her spiritual situation was probably the best. Because the youth group in my home church is going very, very well. There's a couple in my home church that have just put months and years and hours each week of work into the kids in uh, in my church. They have good Bible studies with them. The kids have to go home and study and pray over things and bring feedback back. I mean, it wasn't as good in my time when I was in that church in high school, and, and she seems to be doing very, very well and growing spiritually, praying. We talk with her now about spiritual things like we've never done before. It's just quite amazing. We're, 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 we, we can hardly believe it. And so we didn't want to take her out of that situation. We've talked with um, leadership in OM as well as in our churches and uh, our, our church here in Britain as well, and everybody seems to think it might be a good time to go and spend a little longer. When I was speaking to my home, the pastor of my home church, he says, well, you know, if you do take in a year and a half, call it a working furlough, and I will be working from over there. In other words, I'll be making my trips from New Jersey rather than from here. And a lot of what I do can be done from there anyway. Um, it's been 11 years since we've been in the States for an extended period of time. We've gone over a couple of summers, but the visits to these places have been lightning. Uh, one church that's very enthusiastic in supporting us, maybe that's the reason, uh, in Milan, Michigan, um, you know, we were in and out one day uh, last time we were in the States in the summer of 94. Now, I, I get to some of these places on, you know, when the family isn't there on some of my trips, but again, it's just one day in and out or one meeting in and out and so maybe it's time to go spend a bit more time <coughs> more like a year or a bit more there than just one summer moving around to 28 different places in seven weeks uh, hopefully I can get some meetings in the states while I'm there in New Jersey area and other places and then people have asked us about Carolee what about her and her schooling situation uh, my church is actually running a very good school which goes through the eighth year. It has a high reputation. Lots of people want to put their kids into this school and can't get in. They kind of leave a few extra places for special cases like ours that are closely connected with the church. So Carolee can probably go into that school. And she's doing very, very well in her own grades. She's in the top stream at school and getting good grades, So even with all the absence that she's had recently. So uh, that's encouraging. And I think she'll come back early enough to settle back into the system here in order to be able to go into GCSEs without too much problem. I could go on and on, but I think maybe I'll just stop there. And if people have questions, you know, ask us the questions, whatever, whatever they may be. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jack. Let's just pray. It's a big step. They'll be renting out their house. They'll be making this move. On, uh, let's pray for Carolee a significant adjustment uh, for her. Lord, we just thank you for Jack and Kathy and Carolee and Susan. We thank you for the way you're working in their lives. And you know our hearts that uh, we will miss them for that year and a half, their fellowship, their input, uh, in many different ways. But this does seem to be your way. We pray that our loss here will be a great blessing to people in New Jersey and this church. And throughout the United States, uh, the challenge is uh, just so great in that country at this time. We rejoice that even when we're separated, we can be upholding one another. We can be occasionally on the phone and email and be tied in together much more, much more than uh, in previous generations. Thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there are a lot of things to uh, share. I'm purposely putting this on uh, tape. I hope to make a better effort in 1996 on internal communication to ICT uh, members who are stretched out a bit and are two different uh, sections. But I think most people uh, are interested in, in keeping up on, on what's happening and being able to plan and pray uh, intelligently because certainly... The way things are building up, 96 and 97 are going to be uh, very, very major years. I know we, we easily say that each year, and the devil 
later tries to intimidate us and discourage us when the testings come and the heartbreaks come. And as we look back over 1995, we see some things that, humanly speaking, are, uh, are pretty difficult. One of the things that was presented at uh, Singapore was global action. That's the uh, prototype of the new leaflet that now, subject to, I think, a few changes, has acceptance. And global action is now in launch position, which uh, will change the way we do things in the future, especially for the one- and two-year program in the future. Starting in 97, people won't join a one- or two-year program. Ideally, they'll join global action. We know some will still, of course, call it a one-year program, just like sometimes I uh, ask Vera to quickly send something to New Jersey office, <laughs> which uh, finished quite a few uh, years ago. But uh, it's exciting. And the hope is that instead of seeing our normal about four, uh, four or five hundred come for our uh, midterm programs that we will see uh, closer to a thousand. Uh, this will happen uh, not primarily through events. The main part of global action is not uh, just events, but there will be two launch congresses around the same time, one in India and the other in uh, the Netherlands. It's uh, been interesting to just see how all this has evolved and how uh, we ever got united on this because when it was first launched a couple of years ago, there was cons uh, considerable just disagreement and the, the people behind this have really worked very, very hard. Quite a few of the key people in this global action are on this team, which means... Uh, we really will be involved, and we really want to be supportive of those people, Howard Hergen, Peter Conlon, Christiana, and of course Peter Maiden, and people in Carlisle, and then other people right around the world, because it is uh, part of our global forward thrust. So that's one of the big things that was united on there in uh, Singapore. I guess the thing I'm the most excited about, forgive me for my mundaneness, um, is that we just had the largest single financial breakthrough in several years into ICT. Uh, it is so big that Peter Maiden, as this came into Carlisle, and I have decided not to release the amount of money. It is way over 30,000, 40,000 pounds. Um, why do we do that? Well, I guess maybe it's just that people uh, get such a wrong idea and think that suddenly there's a huge amount of money uh, sitting around when in fact that's not the case. The amount of money we need just to keep ICT, Carlisle, and here going together with things like the Global Impact Fund, what used to be called a development fund, 1% is the Global Impact Fund. Don't confuse it with different national impact funds which are being born. USA just had a lot of funds, a lot of money come into their National Impact Fund. And uh, especially the move of Petra to Carlisle and everything else connected with Petra is extremely expensive. We are going to freeze some of this money and use it over the next six months so that we can uh, balance out this time of the year with the summer. We're just going to try to do this. Because last year, also around this time, we had some very significant giving. Uh, on top of this giving, our transfer into ICT, which is due any day, is bigger, I think, than any month. All of our bills will be paid. All of our loans will be repaid. Not, uh, not special project. They have a ways to go yet. So it is very, very encouraging. And um, we hope that by freezing some of this money, that we can have at least now six months of relative, uh, I don't know what term to use. I don't like to use the word easier. I don't want to use the word sane. Stability. Six months of financial stability so that we can work on other things, including finance. But uh, I thought it would be good. I'm going to turn the recorder off for a moment and just give uh, thanks. I might just say just before, just before we pray that in many ways 95 was the toughest and especially when we consider the provision of this place 
the toughest and the best year uh, that I can remember in living memories. Special projects alone income shot close to one million American dollar equivalent from all over the world. You say, why are we hearing about this in February? Well, I've been away a lot, and in OM, December money comes in February. Fortunately, this big gift came in direct, so we had all this money coming in from December, and then this bigger gift direct. Um, just really quite amazing. So let's give thanks to that for that. We, we often pray and ask, and many have worked very hard on this. Let's give thanks to the Lord. I just thank you and praise you for this major financial breakthrough we've seen, not through just these big gifts, but also this matching fund for those who are short in their own support. What an encouragement this has been to so many. Uh, we know that actual cash hasn't, uh, for the matching part of it, hasn't actually arrived yet, so we can still look forward to that. We just thank you and we lift our hearts in praise and adoration. We never want to take these breakthroughs for granted, even though again and again, for way over 35 years, we, we have seen it happen. We thank you, Lord, for the months that, that it doesn't happen because that reminds us that we can't presume. That reminds us that it isn't just easy going, but it's spiritual warfare. It's a battle, and there is suffering. And our unity, Lord, we think of how our unity was tested a number of times along the way, especially right after the new era. Uh, catastrophe. And Lord, I just, more than the finance, thank you for the oneness and the unity in the body in the midst of all of our diversity, in the midst of all the things that, that, that do hit us and hit us hard. And we worship you together now in thanksgiving for these breakthroughs. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I'd love to spend a whole hour giving thanks um, just in the way of personal testimony. It is impossible for me to describe how much God has just poured His grace into my own weak, needy, struggling heart in the last weeks as we've seen such an avalanche of finance after times of deep, deep uh, despair, uh, never allowing it to... Uh, last too many hours but still it was there many disappointments just the increased costs uh, and then the shortfall of support used to just hammer me almost on a daily basis and somehow the Lord heard our cries your cries and, and rescued us this will make all the difference in the world as to what we are attempting to do you cannot launch all kinds of new things and do what we are trying to do with a massive financial uh, cloud on your head and all that goes with that. Uh, many, many things in 1995 were canceled and postponed. Some of those things are already uh, being resurrected. And we are aware Satan, of course, will be uh, counterattacking. What are some other big things that should uh, encourage and challenge our hearts? Uh, one was a phone call last night. It was like talking across the street on the best telephone in the world but it was to Lagos 2 in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. My satellite, by the way, the kind of satellite we have on the ship, which cost a fortune, now you can have in your own briefcase. So if I go on the ship for any long journeys, I'll bring my own. Uh, they're about $2,000 coming down fast. They may be a little more than that. But um, you can imagine what we paid for our commercial satellite communication on the uh, ship. Some of you may not be aware of all these interesting things. You can now be on a jumbo jet over Afghanistan and phone anywhere in the world from the plane. I've seldom ever done it. I think I'm not accustomed to it yet, especially the price. But I almost did flying in from uh, Singapore, but I couldn't think of anything urgent enough to, to phone about. So, so I, didn't, I didn't call. But they've had some pretty rough weather on Lagos too. They're looking forward to the Cliffords uh, meeting them on arrival. They would like you to carry a tape that I told them about on the on the uh, on the phone. Miles Taves talked on the phone. Peter Nichols was out in Singapore. They had two calm days so far. All the rest four seven, four eight. But um, Miles said the people seem to be holding up quite well. Uh, and uh, I guess some that were expecting to be ill were not ill, but others were ill. <laughs> Toggy Benson sent his greetings. Captain, uh, 
please do continue to pray for Lagos to when it's uh, all the time, but especially a mid-Atlantic crossing is a, an extra serious challenge for a ship uh, that old. So that's an item I thought you would like to uh, hear about. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that uh, that report. A little bit of an update on Operation uh, Acts 13 or Breakthrough 2000. Uh, this uh, is scaring me right out of my shoes at present because uh, Louise Bush has responded in a very, very big way to this. I sort of figured he would since he responds in a big way <laughs> to most things. Uh, a number of you on the team responded to this challenge in a very, very uh, encouraging way. I share this vision in a briefer way with all the leaders at Singapore. Uh, the response has been very, very encouraging. Mike Stratura, by the way, was with us. We commissioned him into his new ministry. And, of course, this new vision that uh, God has given is very much up his, uh, up his street. It's still on discussion uh, stage. Because, uh, but but yesterday with his facts, big long facts back from Louise Bush, it is um, almost moved into the cement stage, which is making me rather uh, nervous. Because of course, with it, Louise Bush is suddenly opening phenomenal doors uh, for us to be able to promote this through the whole worldwide network. Uh, at the same time, he's trying. He wanted a decision yesterday. Uh, to get me to be the co-chairman uh, of this Congress in South Africa. There's four or five Congresses all going on at once. And the one that I would be helping to lead is uh, Congress, especially for missionary executives from all over the world. This is Jacoway, 1997. The South Africans, uh, it seems, may be trying to match the Koreans. They're putting together a mega, mega event in Pretoria around the 28th of June to the 5th of July, 1997. And I, uh, his line was always busy toward the end of the day yesterday, and I eventually fell asleep due to the jet lag, so he didn't hear from me. But uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to say at this stage, except uh, we'll try to keep you informed as to what's happening. If you missed hearing that Acts 13 tape, you can get a copy. She might be in short supply right now, but... Within the near future, you could get a copy from uh, Vera. This will not primarily be an OM uh, vision. It will be an AD2000 mobilization network vision, but the burden is that as many groups as possible will uh, tie into it. It's a very simple thing to adopt. You don't have to be an AD2000. You know, uh, probably similar to AD2000, different fields within OM will respond in different ways. Our policy on 82,000 is it's up to each individual nation. OM is linked in a general way, and as far as active participation, that varies from nation to nation. And in uh, some nations, 82,000 is major, like, for example, the Gulf with Kevin Penn. Other nations, uh, it doesn't... Uh, the, the technical side of it and the uh, structure side is not happening very much. That leads me to the next point that I've just come from a strategic meeting with uh, John Earwicker and Stanley Davis, uh, Roger Foster, David, uh, is it Sprig? Spriggs, thank you. As well as uh, one or two others, sort of making the final decision about 82,000 in the UK. And uh, a survey was taken nationwide among the Evangelical Alliance constituency. And the survey shows that there is not unity about going forward in the UK with an AD2000 structure. So it looks like what's going to happen is that the Evangelical Missionary Alliance is going to ad uh, adopt certain major concepts and the Evangelical Alliance other concepts and run with these goals and concepts within existing structures. For example, there's already a task force or whatever they call it for unreached people in this country. In fact, Les Wade's part of that. 
And hopefully that, Bender Samuel is the leader of it, was also one of the leaders in 82,000. That will uh, take ownership of the unreached people aspect of, uh, of the challenge without necessarily using uh, the name. And this was a disappointment to some people. Others knew it. It was, it was what was going to happen. Um, through this, there's a definite groundswell in Britain that is saying something much more must be done in this country for world missions and the unreached people. Uh, now, exactly how that's going to move, I don't know. Um, Stanley Davis of Evangelical Missionary Alliance has shared that they're adding one or two staff. I think a key staff person already added. That is going to enable them to do much more. The relationship with EA and EMA, a very crucial relationship, is is um, perhaps much better than it's been in the past. There's uh, certainly a desire to, uh, among some very key people to get a greater unreached people's focus at uh, spring harvest in the future. There's thought of launching some kind of major British missions congress. Um, all kinds of things being discussed. And it's, it's quite encouraging. It's always easy to see the negative side. We seem to have so long, so far to go. But uh, there's also considerable encouragement. And all those things will impact us in OM, I can assure you, because we are in the middle of many things here in the UK. So that I wanted you to know about that. And don't hesitate to give me uh, feedback as I receive feedback from many parts of the world, especially concerning some of these new things we're launching into, it's especially helpful to get some from people on our own team as we're so so much in the heart of, of some of this. I wanted to just mention uh, just a word of thanks about this Korean event that's just taken place here. I've heard some good feedback. I know a lot of people had to work very hard. It's somewhat of an experiment to do that kind of thing, and I'm not saying how much we're going to be doing it in the future or doing it in that particular way, but uh, experiments are good, and I just uh, want to thank all of you. Um, I, I can take no credit for it, actually, because I tried to stop it, but the consensus moved against me, and I, I said, fine, you, you know, do it. <laughs> and I always love to see things happen in which I'm not that very much involved, though in connection with things from Korea, <laughs> I tend to get overly uh, involved. So thank you and uh, all those that, that put time and effort into that. And I, there will be long-term results from that kind of thing. Whatever effort and tears or hard work you put into it, knowing the way these things go, the benefits will be greater. And believe me, Korea is blessing OM big time. Um... And we're blessing them. And that's global synergy for the kingdom. I wanted to say that we have another sort of experimental event coming, spearheaded by the uh, Brooks Chaco duet and others. Um, Sirpa probably doing most of the work. No. <laughs> and that's uh, this pastor's event coming up here on, is it 6th or 7th of February? 6th of February, about 40, 45 pastors will be here. In many ways, this is uh, seven or eight years overdue. It's a fantastic idea. So uh, it's just, a, it's just a, a day event. Nobody will be staying here uh, overnight or anything like that. So again, I wanted to mention that for, for prayer. And that kind of event is so much in line with the new thrust of Acts 13. When I was in Singapore, I spoke at the Church of the Savior, one of the fastest growing churches in Singapore. Um, their missions, the co-mission leader, or associate mission leader in that church is Frank Tail from, uh, he used to work in Pakistan. And they are sending 500 people out on mission trips. That's the new in term, by the way, for missions now. Mission trips. Seems to be getting, everything seems to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And some people in very non-grace-awakened ways react to these things. I think that's a great mistake. This is the world we live in. A lot of those people, they didn't go on a mission trip. They go on a holiday. And they spend the same amount of money. Maybe a little more, maybe less. Who knows? The church up the road, which, uh, again, like most churches in Singapore, do their own thing in missions. They don't work through agencies. 
they are sending 1,000 to a church founded by a man named Neighbor. A whole church built on a small church, uh, small cell group concept. Fastest growing church in Singapore. They have 1,000 going on mission trips and they've only launched this concept in the last couple of years. And one of the beautiful things about uh, many of the ministries of OM, I think especially of the ships, but many other aspects of OM, is the phenomenal network we have with churches. And this past weekend, we took meetings in 70 churches in Singapore. And we've already had uh, phenomenal bank, uh, feedback from my church uh, that I, where I took the meeting, about 2,500 people in the meetings, uh, three services, they finally acknowledged that OM may have spirit-filled people. <laughs> it's always an accomplishment, isn't it? But uh, it's, it is amazing because we're not sort of fully uh, in the charismatic movement. Uh, there are those rumors that go around that, you know, really OMers are not uh, spirit-filled. I mean, maybe even this George Gerber guy is not uh, spirit-filled. And though we may smile, those rumors are not exactly helpful uh, when you're trying to build... Uh, relationships with local uh, churches. So it's just interesting how some of this is tying uh, together, including uh, things like this um, meeting with these pastors that's coming up very, very uh, soon. I wanted to just bring an update on the building. Um, this is certainly a huge, a huge challenge facing us. I had an important meeting with Mr. Gui, presented him with all the photos and all the plans. Uh, and he is definitely committed to uh, help in a very, very big way for the repairs and the refurbishing of the building, which will take a considerable amount of time. There will be inconveniences coming upon us while this is done, rewiring the building, repairing roofs. Um, we could opt out and move out for a year uh, into some other facility, all temporary, and then move back. I think that would be maybe even more inconvenient, uh, to say the least. So I think we have to face facts. Probably 1996 will be a year of uh, considerable disruption in this uh, building. And I hope we can somehow uh, roll with the punches and do what we have to do. Of course, a number of people work at home. Some work at home and here. Uh, we are not starting anything immediately. We still have a number of things to get in place, we have quotes to get. So I hope that we can uh, really, really make this a serious matter of prayer, that we can see the breakthroughs uh, along many, many different lines. We have to make some important decisions, very important decisions about the use of the building at the latest by the end of March. So that's going to take grace and that's going to take um, wisdom. Let's just pray about this building thing for a moment. That's just uh, Ron Goodenough's coming here even today to uh, work on some things in connection with that. Lord, we just commit to you the building. Again, we are stunned that you've given us this huge place with all this land. But it's also the responsibility. We think of what people pay just to buy one little flat just down the road here. It's incredible. We think of the report on the radio this morning of housing prices continuing to climb. Maybe only in a small way, I don't know. But Lord, we commit all of this to you, and especially that our unity may remain intact through the changes, and that we would guard our tongues and not speak when in some cases we don't know what we're even saying because of the complexities and the challenge and the, the fast changes that, that are coming upon us. And again, we lift up the church, our relationship with the church, we lift up Heather and John as they live here and face many more complexities than the rest of us. And we're trusting you to give us the right contractors and the right architect and uh, your mind as to how the building can be used. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to apologize for a mistake I made. I think it may be on that Acts 13 tape. I referred in some cases to the Jericho Project. Please forgive me. It's the Joshua Project. There is a Jericho Project. David Conkle works for Jericho Project in Minneapolis, in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Joshua and Jericho 
that do have some connection. But <laughs> I had already caught this mistake, but then Louise Bush <laughs> reminded me of it as well. Uh, the Joshua Project is, is the latest huge development in 82,000, and you can read about it in Ralph Winner's magazine, Frontiers magazine. There's not time to go into detail. But basically everything happening in AD 2000, not everything, but a lot of the various things, are tied now in to the Joshua uh, project with all of its various uh, aspects. So that's one other thing that I wanted to uh, mention. Well, I hope that you uh, find this information helpful. As we work as a team, what one person does certainly affects others. I wanted to just show you a few of the things I brought back from uh, Singapore that you might be interested in seeing. There's the OM Core Study Manual, edited by Richard Briggs. This, of course, was received with great uh, delight and seems to now be on uh, target to become a reality and certainly a major part of uh, global action. There's the OASIS Administrative Instructions and Overview of Ministry. There was a great affirmation of Alan Adams' ministry in this area of, of counseling and pastoral care. Just look at all the things that are in this one paper. Position paper, the vision of Oasis, code of ethics, practice for counselors, counselors' confidentiality and OM, statement of faith, requirements for Oasis counselors, interviews, interview forms for counselors with OM notes, for Love Europe counselors, briefing session, admin instructions, Completion of requests for help forms, sample memorandum for home offices, referral forms, requests for help form. And it does seem that the whole pastoral care challenge and counseling challenge, they are two distinct uh, areas of ministry, uh, is going forward in quite uh, an encouraging way. And there's a little uh, form that quite a few of us had in connection with global um, action. One of the toughest challenges, and we're out of time, that we face, those of us who come from Singapore, and I challenged people about it just before they left, now is to communicate as much as possible from Singapore down right through the grassroots of OM. If you think that's easy, then your knowledge of OM is fairly weak. It is incredibly difficult. It is also expensive, though email can greatly cut the price. Peter Maiden will do the official report that will go out to leaders. Those leaders then have to discern in the light of their time how much of this they can pass on to their, uh, to their team members. Some of it isn't that relevant for the average team member. At the same time, we have many different kinds of team members. We have team members very interested in these things. We have other team members who, if they're honest, are not that interested in these things. So how do you know what to communicate and what not to communicate? And since Satan is also a master at intimidation... Some of our leaders do find it very hard and therefore the information doesn't get out. The biggest event, one of the biggest events coming at us in 1996, and there are many, is the General Council. Uh, we, we affirm there in Singapore that for every one major leader we had there, five key people were not there who are equal to these people. Do not think hierarchically. That is going and this was a specific meeting for people in speci with a specific job that does not make them any more significant than someone who wasn't there. Quite a few, by the way, of people with those jobs, like field leaders, were not there because they could not afford to be there, especially many from Europe. But this was, this was sort of known when we went that way, and the representation from Asia was phenomenal. Uh, because it's right in their heartland. heartland. They knew it probably wouldn't be coming back again. And so, I'm not saying that's why they were there, but they were there. And I think that was very encouraging. It looks like next year's Leaders Conference, International Leaders uh, Conference, will be in Sweden. It's amazing how quickly this group can make a decision at times. This one seemed to take only... Five or six minutes. Various other places were suggested. St. Petersburg was second. Uh, Germany was still, you know, in the running. But somehow they then gave a price uh, for Sweden, which seemed to be incredibly reasonable. And it looks like, anything subject to change, that next January or so we will be 
uh, in Sweden, where it's just the weather is so lovely <laughs> in January. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Lord, we believe that we live in the information age. We are told that, even though some of us don't fully grasp it. We're still hoping we're in the age of action. <laughs> but we know information leads to action, and when it doesn't, then help us, Lord, to take our own spiritual temperature to see where we really are. Lord, these things that we have been able to share about have come as a result of many years of prayer and work on the part of a large number of people in and out of OM. And by your grace, we're going to somehow put these things together. We're going to somehow contextualize it into our own field, our own department, our own personal ministry, into our homes. And by your grace, we are going to go forward. Father, you know my knees are shaking. And part of me wants to uh, run away and feel so overwhelmed, especially by the continued challenges that come on a global scale. Lord, our hearts are shaken as we see the need across the world and we read about things like Burundi and wonder how is this all relevant to that. And Father, we ask you for grace as we attempt to minister right across the world to our own people. Help our leaders to be able to share something of what's happening at uh, in OM and, and through this leaders' meeting and to see it go down right to the, to the grassroots of the movement. Give us greater wisdom and grace in building up the ministry of each individual OMer. In, uh, to use that modern term, of being able to empower them in their particular ministry. At the same time, may they know the crucified life and not overly focus on their own ministry and their own empowerment, but their ability to encourage and empower and help others. That somehow we may function as one body for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much.